Hello, dear children. I once again welcome you to our Jiska Math channel. Hope you may have enjoyed this previous uh, videos in which we discuss at length all the technologies which we are using that in polynomials and we reach up to zero of the polynomial. And now we are going to see what is a remainder theorem, what is a factor theorem. Before going into that, we I would like to remain, revise you what you already studied in the lower classes. In lower classes, we have studied the number systems. What are the factors? What do you know the remainder? What is some uh, division algorithm? Especially it is a Euclidean di division algorithm. What is that? We are going to see that. A factor is a number which divides the given number. There are two numbers given. Suppose A is a number and B is another number. When this B is said to be the factor of this, then the number B is said to be a factor of this if it B exactly divides B A. That means when we are dividing A by B, the remainder should come as 0. For example, uh, number 6, we are dividing that by 3. The quotient is 2 and the 6 and it is remainder is 0. As the remainder is coming 0, we can say this is a factor of 6. Factor of 6. So a yeah, number is said to be a factor of uh, another given number only if it exactly divides the given number. When I say exactly divides, it should leave the remainder as 0 when we are dividing by that number. When 6 is divided by 3, it is leaving remainder as 0. This is a factor. What is a multiple? Multiples of a number will always be equal or bigger than the given number. Suppose I want to see the what are the multiples of 10. Multiples of a 10 is a number which is equal to the given number or greater than the given number which is exactly divisible by the given number. So, it is very clear from the definition itself. Multiple is a number which is bigger than, higher than the given number. See for example, 10, 15, 20 or 18, whatever may be. Any number greater than 10 you take and divide that number by 10. If it divides exactly, that is called the multiple. I am dividing 10 by 10, it is exactly dividing. 10 into 1, it is um, 10. So it is exactly divided, the remainder is 0. When you are dividing 15 by 10, the remainder will come as 5. The quotient is 1. 15, 10, 1. Remainder is 5. So it is not leaving remainder as 0. Therefore, 15 is not a multiple of 10. Whereas 20 is a multiple. 30 is a multiple. 40 is a multiple. Any multiples of 10. 10, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Like that. These are multiples. Whereas factors are those numbers which exactly divides the given number. When I say exactly divides the given number, factors will always be less than or equal to the given number. That's what I have taken. 6 is a number. What are the factors of 6? You should not think the number which is higher than 6. You have to think always a number lesser than 6. For example, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 also. These are the numbers which are less than 6. Now we have to check whether it is a factor or not. Factor is a number which exactly divides a given number. Okay. So 0 we cannot divide. So question doesn't arise. Number 1 divides all the numbers. So it is a factor of 6. 2, when you are dividing 2, 3 is a 6, so it is a factor. 3, 2 is a 6, it is a factor. 4, when you are dividing, it is leaving. 
the remainder as 2. So it is not a factor. 5 is not a factor. 6 is a factor. So this is the factors and multiples of the given numbers. Now we are going to convert the same thing to our algebraic equation, algebraic polynomials. And um, apart from this, you will see the, what is the Euclidean algorithm. Division algorithm, you can say. Euclidean, Euclidean is the name of a mathematician. He found out this Euclidean division algorithm. It is a very simple factor which we are studying right from the 4th standard or 5th standard order by way. See for example, I am dividing 6 by a number 4. I am getting, the, divide 6 by 4, the quotient is 1 and this is 4. The remainder is 2. What we used to call it as? It is divisor. And the 6 is called dividend. And this 1 is called the quotient. And 2 is called the remainder. In all divisional process, we used to call this is a number which we are dividing is known as a dividend. This is a divisor by which we are dividing that. That's called the divisor. What is coming out? It is a quotient and this is a remainder. See, my dear children, the four names. One, two, three, four. There is a relation between these three, four names. Dividend, divisor, quotient and remainder. See, for example, I can write six is equal to 4 into 1 plus 2. There's four numbers only I'm using this. That is, dividend is equal to dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. This number 6 dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder. Any number, any number if you are taking divided by another one, you will come the same thing it is. So this division algorithm is known as a Euclidean division algorithm. Let me write once again, dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder. This algorithm is known as Euclidean division algorithm. Let me take another example also. For example, 28. Divide them by 3. 7 3s are 21. 8 3s are 24. 9 3s are 27. So 9. 27. Remainder 1. This, this is a remainder. This is a divisor. This is a dividend. This is a quotient. Now see the relation. 28 can be written as as it is. Dividend 28 can be written as divisor 3 into quotient 9 plus remainder. That is 1. 9 3 is 27. 27 plus 1, 28. 28 this. This is a division algorithm. So the same, the knowledge what we acquired in this number system, we are going to study that in the algebraic expressions and polynomials. In polynomial also, we can divide one polynomial by another polynomial. For example, x square, x cube, minus 6x square, plus 3x plus 7. You are asked to divide this by x minus 1, for example. This we already studied 
You already studied in 7th and 8th standard. The lower classes you might have studied. I will just remind you once again how to divide. When we are dividing a polynomial by another polynomial, this is a division, this is a divisor. Now we got to find out what is the quotient, what is the remainder. So, how to divide? Take the first term and take the first term of this. When we are writing this, ensure that the polynomial is written either in ascending order or descending order. It is always better to write in the descending order of ours. Q, 2, 1, 0. So like that you write. Even if it is a jumble way it is given, rearrange the terms and write that in the descending orders. Now after written this in the descending order and this also like that. Take the first term, take the first term, divide x cube divided by x it's x square write in the quotient place once you return x square multiply this x square this this one so x into x square x x cube x square into minus 1 minus x square then subtract Subtract this one from this. So this two will be cancelled and this is minus 5x square. Take the next term. Plus 3x. The procedure you got to follow. As it is again, repeat again. Take the first term. Take the first term and divide. What is coming out? You write it here. Minus 5x square divided by x. That is minus 5x. Then minus 5x, you multiply with this. So minus 5x square, minus 5x into minus 1, that is a plus 5x. Subtract. Subtract means change the sign and add. This is a cancel and this is minus 2x. Take the last term. As it is, plus 7. So now the, again the procedure you got to um, uh, go ahead as it is. Take the first term, take the first term and divide minus two. So minus two x plus two. Subtract plus sign minus sign subtract five. As the degree of this is zero, which is lesser than this, stop it there itself. This is the remainder, this is the quotient, this is a dividend, this is a divisor. So this is a divisor, this is a dividend, this is a quotient, this is a remainder. This is a fundamental thing what you studied in the earlier classes in 6 and 7, how to divide one expression by another expression. Now the Euclidean algorithm says dividend is equal to Divisor into quotient plus remainder. Dividend, that is x cube minus 6x square plus 3x plus 7. This is a dividend. See what divisor x minus 1 into x square minus 5x minus 2 plus 5. If you want to check whether you, what you divided is right or wrong, just remove the bracket. Multiply this, this by this. Then multiply as also you already studied x into this, x into this, x into this, then minus 1 into x square, minus 1 into 5x, minus 1 into minus 2, remove the bracket and plus 5, add it, you will get the same. So dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. Now the question is, 
the remainder comes as 5. In some cases, we need only the remainder. Only the remainder I want to find out for many cases. Uh, before coming to that, let me tell you, here is a function polynomial. Let us consider this as a polynomial fx. And in that fx, this is a remainder 5. This is a polynomial. Let me find out what is the polynomial value. The zero of the polynomial, zero of the polynomial or not, we got to go to find out. Find the value of the polynomial. So we have to substitute the values f of one. One cube minus six into one square plus three into one plus seven. That is equal to one minus six plus three plus seven. So 11, that is 5. See, f of 1 is equal to 5. See that here 5 is the remainder. So that is a relation. That is what the remainder theorem states. To find out the remainder, it is enough if you find out the value of the polynomial for a particular number. So what the remainder theorem states? Let fx be a polynomial and x minus a is a linear factor. f of x is a polynomial and x minus a is a linear polynomial. If we are dividing fx by x minus a, then the remainder will be f of a. That is, if fx is divided by x minus a, the remainder will be f of a. So, a polynomial is given, another linear polynomial is given. To find out the remainder, it is enough if we just find out the value. Just find out the value of this polynomial for the zero of this. The zero of this is we know that x minus 1 is equal to 0. If x minus 1 is equal to 0, then x is equal to 1. There is a 0 of this. Simply substitute x is equal to 1. What value you are getting then? That is a remainder. No need of divisions. Division we can avoid. Division we can leave it. Okay. Uh, so, let us very clearly define what is a remainder theorem. Let fx is a given polynomial and x minus a is a linear polynomial. When x minus f of x is divided by x minus a, then the remainder is f of a. That means fx can be written as fx, you are dividing that by x minus a. Then there is a quotient, quotient x, and there is a remainder x. Just a polynomial shape I am giving that. One polynomial is divided by this, the quotient is this, and the remainder is this. As per the Euclidean algorithm, just now what we um, uh, defined, f of x is equal to x minus a into qx plus the remainder. This is as per the Euclidean algorithm. So fx is a given polynomial and it is divided by x minus a and then this is a quotient and this is a remainder. So as per the Euclidean algorithm, as per the Euclidean division algorithm, we can say fx is equal to x minus a into qx plus a reminder. Let fx be a polynomial. x minus a is a linear given polynomial. When you are dividing that, let qx be the quotient and r be the remainder. Always the remainder polynomial will be of lesser degree. Lesser than this. It should be lesser than this. When the division also, 
that remainder should be less than the dividend. Then only we will stop it. Otherwise, we got to continue. So now let us put x is equal to a here. F of a replace x by a is equal to a minus a into qx plus remainder. A minus a minus a minus a is zero. So therefore, f of a equal to zero plus remainder. Therefore, remainder is equal to f of a. This is what the remainder theorem states. When a polynomial fx is divided by x minus a, the remainder will be f of a. To prove this one, we are starting with the Euclidean algorithm, division algorithm. The division algorithm, Euclidean division algorithm says that divisor dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. Put x is equal to a. f of a is equal to this. This term is 0. So remainder is equal to f of a. And hence it is proved. So my dear children, in the next unit, ne next video, we will some, so solve some problems of remainder theorem. Then we will go to the factor theorem. With this, let us conclude. If you like this one, like this video, subscribe and share. Thank you.